Game of Thrones. <laughs> I'm not messing with. See, y'all do a little bit too much. Every 15, 20 minutes is really when the show fully starts for me, in my opinion. I, every single time. So anyway, this is the recap for Game of Thrones season so it's seven, episode eight, no one. And before we get into that, I just wanted to, of course, put out a love and blessings to the city of Orlando, because a lot of foolery has been going on. Uh, rest in peace to, of course, Christina uh, Grimmy, and also the 50 people, well, everyone who was involved in the uh, shooting, who, who was involved as far as getting hurt, killed in the shooting at the nightclub in Orlando. Also, the shooting in Texas. Also, the bombing in Lebanon. This week, this weekend sucked. <laughs> I mean, 2016 has, a, there's been so much going on. <laughs> yeah, so, I just wanted to get that out. And now, the episode started off with... Remember Lady Crane? Yeah, I warned her and then that's why I got stabbed. Well, Lady Crane, it looks like she's gotten uh, more clout at her job because not only did we see her just do a scene of her delivering that uh, speech of her pretending to be, of course, acting as, what's her name, Cersei, after, ooh, excuse me, her son was killed, instead of her just moping and being sad that's how she started off but then she was like and then with the vengeance and all of that and so that's when you're like oh okay so we see Aya's impact is clearly shown it's clearly shown she had an impact on the show she had to show an impact on Lady Crane so shout out to Aya for that actually now speaking of Aya you're wondering where could she have possibly gone where could she have possibly gone because we're like she has no friends there where is she going to hide out? <laughs> type of thing. Well, guess what? I decided I'm going to go the one place where I think I can actually trust her. Because I showed some good faith on my end. Maybe she's going to show some good faith on her end. Lady Crane, that's right. When Lady Crane went back to her dressing room, she, no she heard a sound. And she removed the cloak. And there was Aya. And so she brought Aya back to her home, and she was just like, you know, uh, Aya wanted to know what happened to the girl who was trying to take Lady Crane's job. And she was just like, well, Aya, excuse me, let me tell you a little bit something about myself. I have a temper, and first off, the reason why I can bandage you up so well is, I used to date she was like, she used to date some not-so-nice, favorable men. And these not-so-nice, favorable men were all cheaters. And I didn't put up with that mess. So, you know, I would stab them when they got home after they had their little trysts. And then I would feel bad about it, so I'd have to bandage, bandage them up. And so I don't take well with people messing with me. So I, the same th I did the same thing that I did to those men, but to that little girl's face who thought she could get me killed and replace me and eat up. Of course, the food was terrible. And she was just like, Aya, you should come with me. And I was just like, I can't. It's not safe. You know, they're going to be after me, so I can't go with you. So she was just like, well, you know, what are you going to do? It's just like, have you heard of a place past, what was it, what, Restoros? I think that's what she said. It was like, past that. Do you know what's past that? I was like, no one knows what's past that. Exactly. That's where I'm going to go. I'm like, oh, I, that's cute. That's cute. But first you got to live. So she was like, okay, so drink this. And it was like, what is that milk of the poppy? No, I am not taking that. Because if you guys don't know, milk of the poppy is a super, super strong opiate. I mean, think of if you were to mix, uh, mix like, a bunch of different prescription medications like Prozac, Percocet, all of that stuff, all in one, and add something else to it, and that's what you get milk of the poppy. So she's like, no, I'm cool on that, but it's like, no, you want to get better? You want to actually rest? Well, you're going to have to go and drink up. Now, afterwards, we see these guys, and they're just having fun, and I'm just like, why are they supposed to look familiar? And... You know, one just playing around because you have these two younger men who 
have never even experienced uh, kissing and so they're like well you know we're gonna practice I'm like we're gonna practice and so the older guy took one of the younger guys and he was simulating how to properly kiss a woman and hold a woman while you're doing it and so I'm like okay where's the BS gonna start so he takes his hand and he slips it right into the guy's ass I'm like Lord Jesus not today not today so afterwards we <laughs> everyone looks spooked and I'm like who can they possibly be spooked by of course it's the hound yes the hound is over the hound is like you killed the people that I actually connected with I haven't connected with people in a long time and you go you take that from me so he has his axe and he's just slashing he's slashing it's like who sent you where's the rest of your people oh you don't want to tell me bam <laughs> and, and we get back to uh, Tyrion and Va Va what is it Vars and Vars is going away for a while. And you know, Tyrion's gonna miss his little friend. He's gonna miss his little old buddy. It's kinda like a what would you do without me type of thing. And I was like, yeah, I'll figure it out. But Tyrion looks really sad. I forgot what Vars is doing, so leave a comment below, let me know what Vars is doing. Oh yeah, please like, comment, subscribe, because I doubt I said that due to uh the intro. Now, we're back and Cersei, she has her her new Vars is what I'm gonna call him because I don't remember his name. And she has her what is her his name? The Mountain? I think that's what his name is. Yeah, well her little cousin, who's now a part of, of course, the religious I'm gonna call it the religious cult, that's what I'm gonna call it. Uh he's like, yes, the High Sparrow has requested that we take you out of the Red Set. You're not going to stay here anymore. She was like, what do you mean I'm not going to stay here anymore? He promised me. He was just like, <laughs> he didn't promise you crap. What are you talking about? So, the High Sparrow's minions try to go and take Cersei by force. Because she was like, I refuse. So, the mountain, one of the minions tries to go and strike the mountain. That doesn't work out too well. He gets his face ripped right off. He gets his head ripped right off. And of course that spooks the High Sparrow's people. So Cersei's not going anywhere. And I'm thinking to myself, I was promised a fight. I was promised a fight. Where is that damn fight? Because I'm not seeing it right now. And then uh, we have Brienne of Tarth and her squire. And they're looking over to see uh, Jamie Lannister. They're doing that because... Of course, I needs an army. She needs her uncle, Blackfish, to go and um, allow her to use his army, to use his people. But it's not really his people now, is it? We'll get into that a little bit later. Bronn reunites with Brienne Squire. And Bronn's just like, oh, that's cute. So did she tap that yet? Because, you know, I would tap that. Well, aside from, he was like, no, she's teaching me how to fight and be a knight and all that. He's like, oh, that's cute. So show me what she taught you. Okay. So he squares up and she's like, all right. Um, well, he's like, you know, I don't know how to fight like you know how to fight. It's like, exactly. That's the issue right there. You're learning how to, you know, how to do a nice stance and how to hold your sword and all that. But that's great. But in a real fight, in a real fight, it's no holds bars. In a street fight, anything goes. You don't understand that concept, and you can't take things at face value. So it's just like, okay, take a stance. And I was like, all right, so look, look at how your feet are, boom, boom! It's like, see, in a street fight, you can't take your eyes off me. What are you doing? Do it again. Do it again. No, stance is actually important, so do it again. You don't need to look at your feet to know that you're in the right stance. And Brienne is talking with Jamie Lannister, and... Why have to call my soul name to Jamie? And, you know, Brienne loves her some Jamie. She really does love her some Jamie. I mean, I guess technically what woman at that time wouldn't love them some Jamie? So she was just like, look, I am here on the behalf of Sansa Stark. You know, that person that you uh, told me to go and get, who I was already going to get anyway, but somehow it, it was more of a validation once you said to go and get her. Yeah, well, 
I found her, and now I'm going to her home back, and that involves getting your way. Now, we can do this one of two ways. I can go and talk to her Uncle Blackfish. I can go and do that. Uh, and you can get out of my way, but I understand that you want the castle, so here's how this is going to go. You're going to allow me safe passage in there. I'm going to go and speak to him, get him to surrender, take his army, so that I can add it to uh, Sansa's. Or, you can go and not allow me to do that, make things trouble. Oh yeah, by the way, here's your sword. This is like, no, this is yours. This is yours. You've earned it, baby. You've earned it. I'm like, so are they going to screw or not? Of course not, because he loves Cersei, but you know. Anyway, so she's granted safe passage, and Blackfish is over. Blackfish is just like, I haven't seen my little niece in forever. How could you possibly, possibly think that I would go and just believe that this letter is real. I don't know her handwriting. Last time I saw her, she was a child. Anyway, I did not come here to take over this castle, to take over River Run, just to hand it over to Jamie Lannister and to go and fight for my niece against someone who I don't have any issues with. Like, what's really going on? What's really good? And that's when Brienne switched up the tactics. Brienne was just like, you know what? I was my I was charged to serve and protect someone else that maybe you respect and love a little bit more. You know, Catherine? Yes. I was uh, serving and protecting her. She told me, of course, to go and find her kids to go and make sure that they were protected. I'm trying to do that right now because I found her daughter, Sansa. I'll eventually find Aya. Well, actually, I did find Aya, but Aya got away. So, you're going to take this letter. You are going to believe what's in this letter. You're going to help us out. That's what we're going to do because we're going to reclaim the North. That's what we're going to do. And so he took the letter. He read it. It was just like, oh, wow. She writes just like her mother. But then he got all sentimental. He was like, you know, I'm sorry, but I'm a different type of person. I'm still not going to help you. We don't have that many people. Um, what can we possibly do with our numbers? And she was just like, you have more people than she does right now. It's like, still, I took over this castle. I'm not giving it up for anything. Cersei finds out really fast that... No one is on her side except for Jamie at this point. She goes and she's in the uh, royal chambers, courtyard, whatever it's called. She listens to her son throw a little speech. Oh yeah, and she was told, you know, just like with all the other women, your ass is going to have to stay far to the left. That's where you're going to have to go because you cannot be by his side. No, 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 no. Not anymore. Then, the thing is that he essentially goes and says something that screws him over. Marjorie, Marjorie's um, brother, and his own mother. His own mother! They aren't allowed a trial by combat. No, they have to do it in the old traditional way where they go before the panel and they basically get told either if yay or nay. Will they be able to live out their lives the way they want to? Or are they pretty much screwed? I'm like, you know what? Even though I like the fact that Tommen has a heart and he's all sensitive and he's all kind and stuff. Where is his backbone? Where is his backbone? I understand this is probably the only way where he's going to survive. But I, I feel a certain way about this because I'm not mad that Cersei can't... Um, defend herself because she deserves everything she's getting and more. The only thing I actually wanted to see was the fight. And I know the Iron, the Mountain, would have secured us a really good fight. Actually, maybe it will have been a quick one, so maybe not. Cersei's new Vars is just like, yeah, so my little birdies, they got to talking and this is good. You're gonna want to hear this type of thing. I'm like, okay, so we're gonna have to wait until episode 10, you know, the last episode, to hear what he's talking about. Is that what we're gonna have to do? Uh, Tyrion, he's irritated, not irritated, but he's lonely. He's lonely and he needs Grey Worm and Missandei to go and drink with him. He needs drinking buddies. It's not like Vars did that with him, but Vars gave good conversation. 
gave him a debate, and that's what he's really longing for. He's really longing for companionship in this city where no one really knows him, no one really trusts him. They trust each other, they even trust people who possibly tried to kill them more than they really trust, or more, I should say, feel comfortable with um, Tyrion. So, he convinces them to drink, this is like, your queen commands it, drink up. <laughs> Masande. She was just like, this is awful. And then next thing we know, she's becoming a lush. She... This is, this is Masande. I got a joke. It was just like, you know, I didn't know any jokes before, but... I got a joke now. So, Tyrion is talking about how... You know jokes? Do you guys know jokes? Do you know anything? Come on, just talk to me. And he talks about a joke about the Lannister, a Stark, and I forgot what the third person was. There's uh, a bug in each of their drinks. The Lannister is repulsed and asks for another one. The middle person, the middle house, goes, takes the bug, eats it. And then he drinks his drink. The Stark is just like, We you blood? You bl uh, you bloody fly, spit out me wine, type of thing. I'm like, okay, so why are we trying to sound like we're from the West Indies? But, <laughs> alright. And, um, you know, they're really not amused. They're trying to pretend, but Grey, Grey Worm is over it. He's just like, Lord, where's the queen? When is she coming back? Because this imp's getting on my damn nerves. <laughs> so, that's the type of look he has in his face. And Masandi, like I said, she's enjoying that wine. So she goes, she comes up with a story. She was just like, you know, uh, two slave translators, they're stuck on a boat and the boat is sinking. And so the one asks to the other, call for help. And she was just like, help, um, I can speak 19, I can say help in 19 languages. Which one do you want me to choose? And she's cracking up at that. And they're just like, ah, ha, ha, ah, ha, ha, ah, ha, ha. And Tyrion's just like, Grey Worm, say a joke. And it's just like, look, you know, we us, we on Sully, we know no joke. Get it? That's a joke. And they're just like, ah, ha, ha, ha. And of course, Grey Worm likes the fact that um, Missandei's laughing at his jokes. Thankfully, I'm like, this scene was way too long. You see how that reenactment was way too long? The scene was way too long. Just for that. You know why? To keep us off guard. Next thing we know, we see these big ships coming. And there's so many of them. I'm like, okay. It could be a couple of people. It could be uh, Tyrion and his sister. I mean, it could be Theon and his sister. It could be Theon's uncle. Or, or a third one that... No one thought about at the time. It could, it really could be Danny. It could be Danny and her forces because she told them that they would have to get on ships. Right now I'm thinking to myself, where in the hell did they get ships? So that's why I was like, okay, maybe it's not them. They're thinking it's the enemy right now. Jamie, he goes and uh, talks with Edmund. And you know, Jamie tries the nice approach, but we know Jamie really isn't a nice guy. He really is Cersei 1.0 because Cersei is Jamie 2.0. <laughs> and. He talks to the admin, he's just like, well, you know, I have a family, you have a family, you actually have a son, and you have a significant other, but they were taken away from you, so I can go and get your son, I can bring them here, and I can do one of two things. I could bring him up to be a fine knight, have the best of everything, you'll live a comfortable life, or two, you know, I love my sister, regardless of the fact that people may be disgusted by the type of love I have for my sister, incest, uh, and... Um, all of that. I love her. I love, which means, of course, I love her kids because they're my kids. He didn't say that, but I feel like that went without saying. So he's just like, you know, brother to brother, because I know you love Catherine Stark. You know, I knew her. I knew her for at least a moment. And he's just like, don't talk about my sister. Don't talk about my sister. I mean, we keep forgetting that the Starks, well, not the Starks, but that, you know, Sansa, she has family all over the place. It's just that their last name isn't Stark. That's what it really is. So, Jamie's just like, look, I can get your son. I can get that little boy. I can fling his ass over to um, Blackfish and see how they like that. Let's see how they like the um, like the young master of River Run to be flinged over there. So he was just like, go and get that castle back for me, or else. So. That's essentially what he does. He's just like, let me in, let me in. 
the people there just like, you know, he's the master of this castle. We have to let him in. Blackfish was just like, Blackfish truly was over it. He was just like, you know, we're not doing that. They were like, yes, we are. And sure enough, they lowered that gate. They allowed them to come through. Blackfish knew it was over for him, so now he had to run. And so he talked with Brienne, and she was just like, come with us. Come with us. We need you by your um, family side. And he was just like, nope, I'm sorry. That's not happening. I am about self. I respect you so much because you have more love and dedication for my family than I do. That's not what he said, but that's what he should have said. So, after that, um, she ran off and they reclaimed the castle. He got killed in the, the battle and Jamie saw Brienne leaving and he was just like, you know, waved at her for safe passage and that's where she left. Now, we see... We see... We see... We see that it actually was the enemy, and it really was probably the uh, people from the slavers. What was it called? Uh, you know, the slave, the slave oppressors. We don't call them masters here. We call them the slave oppressors. The oppressors came back to try and reclaim the land, and uh, it was just like, oh crap, they're almost screwed. I mean, the place looks like looks like a true war zone. A true war zone and so they're all freaking out because they're like what are we gonna do we're gonna have to make our final stand I mean that's how bad it got so I think the castle was really the only thing standing at that point and then they hear something up top they're thinking crap they got attacked so one of the guards goes out and then he comes back I'm like oh wait he comes back I was like Danny I thought Danny was going to come back sooner, but she was just like, she's back. And you know how Danny has that look of, I'm going to kill you almost? Almost every time we see her, she has that, like, really type of look. So she's back. Her dragon's back. So, um, I'm thinking that possibly part of that destruction was because of her dragon uh, fighting the enemy. Because if you actually look at the imagery, it looks like... Uh, the enemy was already slain. I could be wrong, but this is like Danny's back. Queen Daenerys back. Okay, finally we can get some action in these next two episodes. I want to see action. Speaking of action, uh, we <laughs> we have the Hound who he is. <laughs> the Hound meets up with his old buddies. You know the old um. Red light, Lee, fire of light, religious people. Yeah. So he finds them. It's just like, yeah, so what's going on here? Why do you have the people that I want to kill? Well, we need to kill them too because they killed friend of friends of ours. It's like, oh, Lord, here we go. Everything's connected. We have the same friends. They're just like, you have friends? It's like, shut up. Anyway, I'm going to kill them with this axe. This is like, no, you're not going to kill all of them. You're going to kill one of them. It's like, no, I want to kill two of them. So it's like, okay, you can kill two of them. But no, you can't kill with the axe. This is like, so what's the point? This is like, we do hangings. Instant kills. We don't want people to... Get that damn axe and slice them up. It's what I was thinking. But it's like, fine. It's like, damn, he really lost a lot of fight. He's getting too old because... He actually accepted two of them just being hung. And so he took the boot off because he needed new boots. Off of the guy he just killed. The guy was big and fat. So I guess his um, size was going to be <laughs> the right one for him. So he's just like, you got anything to eat type of thing? They're just like, yeah, so what's going on? What's good? What do you have? Um, what are your plans? And he's just like, I got nothing going on. So it looks like he's going to join back up with them. I'm thinking... Season 8 is, oh, why did I say season 7? This is season 6. Yeah, season 7 is going to be epic. It has to be because I feel like season 6, the whole time, they've just been setting up the show for greatness again. Because season 6, was it returning back to it having some oomph? But I feel like season 7 is when we're going to get action. It's probably They're probably going to have to really increase the budgets even more because I just want to see blood, carnage, I want to see resolutions to some of these storylines because they're being dragged out for too long now in my opinion. But um, we get back to Aya and Aya is under attack. You know, Lady Crane who's tending to her, she gets killed! 
And Lady Crane doesn't realize who this, um, because Lady Crane gets visited by Willow, whatever her name is, and Willow was wearing one of the masks, so Lady Crane was just like, wait a minute, how are you that person? How are you here? What is, what is going on? So, like I said, Lady Crane is killed. Aya is in trouble. Aya starts to run for her life. I mean, Aya is sprinting. I'm thinking to myself, wasn't she hurt? I mean, Aya is jumping off a ledge. She's jumping off of roofs. She's falling onto, what is it called, stairs. She's tumbling downstairs. I'm like, Aya, your wounds. What's going on? So then we finally see the wound opens back up after her last big fall. So now she's limping. Now she's limping because that evil older girl is running after her. She's just enjoying this. Aya is leaving the blood trail everywhere. I'm like, wait a minute. Aya. Aya, you're a little too smart for this. This doesn't make sense. Because I knew it was a trap. I'm like, you can't tell me she's not purposely leaving this trail. This girl who's chasing her is so obsessed that she's so dumb that she doesn't realize that Aya is... You got... Fooled. Why would you go into an enclosed space that you are not familiar with? Who does that? When you're finding someone, you never go on their turf. You went onto Aya's turf. You thought you had Aya in that dark room. Aya shows your ass. She took out that can she um she uh destroyed that candle. It went dark. The next thing we see is we're back at the temple of the many faced god. He's looking at this blood trail, and it's of Aya, but it's because Aya took your head, your face, put it up on that wall. That's what happened. You thought you were going to complete Aya's task of killing Lady Crane because the Mayface God wants a body. He's going to get a body. and um, But Aya got that ass. And I'm so happy because when the Mayface God was just like, oh, You're back. You came back to me. She was like, No. I am Aya Stark of Winterfell. You hear me? I'm going home. I'm taking what's mine. Screw you. Screw everything else about you. I'm leaving. And of course she had Needle pointed towards him, but she left. And you saw that look on his face like, I, that's what he was going for this whole time. Because he originally was like, oh, you come back. You accept the fact that you truly have no name. She was just like, no. Of course I have a name. I have a name, I have a face, I have a family, I have a personality. And I really think that's what he was trying to train her to be. Finally, be willing to kill. Really be willing to kill. And get what's yours. Because this world isn't fair. It really isn't. So, I see it. If no one else comes to that conclusion, I came to it for you. Again, please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. I was like, oh snap. He was training her this whole time.